Good morning, dear. Good morning, sweetheart. How do you want your eggs? Three minutes. Oh. Well, in that case, you should have come down two minutes ago. They're already five. I'll eat them the hard way. Uh, I knew Ronnie wouldn't be down to breakfast. He got him pretty late last night, didn't he? Oh, no. He was in by one o'clock. I was up at two. I didn't see him. Well, you should have been up at one, and then you would have. I guess I underslept. Oh, I'm going to use the car this afternoon. Blanche and I are going downtown to see that new Marlon Brando picture. You saw it yesterday. Well, I know, but Blanche said she'd like to see it again when the theater isn't so noisy. Oh, the theater was noisy, huh? Well, Blanche thought so. She said everybody sitting near us kept saying shh so loudly that she didn't know whether it was me or Marlon Brando who was explaining how Lucille Vandalip lost her new girdle. <laughs> Uh, I don't think I've got this straight. Uh, during the picture, you were explaining to Blanche how Lucille Vandalip lost her girdle and everybody around you kept going, shh. Yeah, I guess they wanted to hear how she lost it, too. I do, too. How did she lose it? A pickpocket got it away from her. <laughs> yeah, she uh, had it in a package and she laid it on the counter and turned her back and somebody stole it. <laughs> I, uh, I expected a different finish. Well, I forgot to make one up. She was sitting in a bus. Never mind, dear. And... Yeah. <laughs> oh, good morning, Mother. Oh, good morning, Ronnie. Morning, Dad. Good morning, Ronnie. What time did you get in last night? Well, uh, well uh, he, uh, he got in at one o'clock. I told you. And then, Ronnie, if you were here, then you'd know it too. I'm home for breakfast. I'm eating out. So I have a business appointment. I know where you're having breakfast. Over at that drive-in where that cute car hop is working, Verna Mason. Yeah, I told you, business appointment. See, it's an appointment for me and business for her. I see you spend your mornings with her and your evenings with Bonnie Sue. It gets a little lonesome around lunchtime. Well, goodbye. <laughs> goodbye, dear. And if you want Bernie to fix your three-minute eggs, don't get there two minutes late. I better rush. <laughs> you know, I'm kind of worried about that boy. Me too. I hate to think of him being so lonely around lunchtime. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's, that's what I was worrying about. Gracie, 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 look what I got. My notice to appear for jury duty. Well, that sounds wonderful. If I didn't have some work to do, I'd love to hear about it. Yeah, uh, oh, look, you know, in the, in the letter it says that I have to uh, appear in Judge Strickland's chambers today, and if he and the jury commissioner pass on me, then I'll be a juror. And these trials should be very interesting. Isn't that exciting? If I didn't have some work to do, I'd love to hear about it. Yeah. <laughs> <I'm> busy. <laughs> Blanche, this letter says if they accept you, you'll be on jury duty for about a month. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm afraid Harry will miss me terribly. Well, what if he does? I'll miss you more than he does. Really? Well, I mean it. Harry will only miss you because you're his wife and he has to. But I'll miss you because I love you. <laughs> yeah, <it's> true. <laughs> Harry's a husband, but that isn't the same thing as a good friend. But anyway, it'll just be for a few weeks. A few weeks? Well, maybe I could come down and visit in the jury box with you. Oh, no, honey, I'm afraid not. Or, uh, better yet, maybe you could get out of it. Helen Wilson did it very easily. All she did was have a baby. <laughs> Gracie, it's your civic duty. Oh, well, if it was her civic duty to have a baby, I'm glad she did it. No, no, it's, it, it's everybody's civic duty to serve on the jury if you're called. And I know you'll miss me, and I know Harry will miss me, too, but there's nothing we can do about it. Well, then I better have some breakfast. I'm going to have some ham and eggs and some sliced tomatoes and some home fried potatoes and some muffins because I hate to cry on an empty stomach. George, old man, may I enter? Well, Harry, as long as you got one end in, bring the other end in with it. George, I have the most wonderful tidings to impart to you. Well, good. Let's have a few minutes of tidings. Go ahead, impart. Blanche has been called for jury duty. I know she told me. Oh, who can imagine a more fortuitous set of circumstances to be rid of my dear spouse for a few weeks and get paid for it at the same time? Well, that's the system of government we live under. Oh, bless America. <laughs> you love Blanche, but I didn't realize how much. Oh, George, seriously, I do love my wife, but to have to endure her execrable cooking week in and week out... In other words, your heart still cares, but your stomach has had it. Well, George, you state that rather vulgarly. No. Let me put it this way. Now, do you know that satiated, uncomfortable feeling you get after you've eaten too much? Yeah. Well, I get the same feeling before I sit down to one of them. She, uh, she cooks that badly, huh? The alley cats avoid our house. 
Well, that, uh, that answers my question. But frankly, George, there are other reasons why I'm looking forward to this freedom. I only hope that Blanche is involved in one of those important trials. You know where they lock the jury in for a few nights? Thinking of living it up. <laughs> oh, indeed I am. Oh? There is a titillating exhibition of Greek sculpture at the museum. Now, one doesn't invite one's wife to that. <laughs> and I can see you strolling happily among the fig leaves. Yes. <laughs> and then there is the annual convention of the Philatelic Society. An all Brahms concert at the UCLA Auditorium. I hope they're smart enough to keep their doors locked. <laughs> Our accountants club is having a special showing of early American ledgers. Harry, I'll get my hat and go with you. Harry! <laughs> yes, my dear? Come on down. I fixed your breakfast. I'll be right there. Her last breakfast, but I think I can manage it. <laughs> what can Blanche possibly do to a breakfast? George, she is the only woman I know who can take bacon and vulcanize it. <laughs> while, uh, while Blanche is on the jury, this boy is really going to have himself a time. How do you like that routine he's got planned? You know, that's the same schedule he planned to use on his honeymoon, but Blanche sort of spoiled everything. She insisted on going on the honeymoon with him. <laughs> you know, all husbands think that when their wives are away, they can go out and get a million laughs. They're lucky if they get 999,000 laughs. He's lucky if he winds up with a snicker. Of course, he's not the first husband to get all excited about reliving his gay, carefree bachelor days. We all think we can do that, but there are two good reasons why we can't. First one is that we're too old, and the second one doesn't matter. <laughs> but let's face it. If our memories were honest, we'd all remember that even those good old days were nothing. When we, when we were young enough to be playboys, who knew where the playgrounds were? <laughs> but usually a husband who's left alone doesn't know what to do with himself like this friend of mine. His wife left him for a few days, and he got so lonesome and miserable that he started driving through red lights, hoping that a traffic cop would stop him. He missed his wife so much, he wanted somebody to ball him out. <laughs> and then I know some fellas that love to play poker, but their wives interfered with their games, so they figured out a little scheme. They all sent their wives to Palm Springs for a week so they could get in some uninterrupted poker games. The problem was, after giving their wives money for the trip, they didn't have any left to play poker with. <laughs> I remember Gracie left me for a few days. She, she, she went to visit her mother and father up in San Francisco, and I must admit that the first night I was very lonely. But then I had a real big time. Not only was Gracie's mother and father nice to me, but I enjoyed riding those cable cars. <laughs> up and down in those hills. It was, oh, it was big fun. Before I go see Judge Strickland, I fixed you some fresh coffee. Oh, thank you, dear. There we are. How are you baking and eggs? Excellent. Especially the bacon. <laughs> you haven't touched it. Oh, well, dear, that's because I had so much of your delicious pot roast for dinner that I'm not hungry anymore. That was three nights ago. Well, yes, dear, but you, you see, it, it stays with you. Oh, man. With me gone, who's going to prepare your meals for you? Well, darling, it won't be the same, but I, I think I can manage. I got an idea. Why don't I get up early in the morning and before jury duty fix all your meals for you? Oh, no, Blanche, you've done enough to me. Uh, I mean, for me. You know something? You're going to miss me and Gracie's going to miss me. I'm going to tell that to Judge Strickland and maybe he'll let me off of jury duty. Blanche. How can you possibly think of shirking your duty? Why, the very foundation and cornerstone of our democracy is based on the system. And any citizen who even harbors the thought of evading such service is actually betraying the government in the fullest sense of the word. Now go, Blanche, go before you're guilty of treason. Treason! <laughs> I've been jury commissioner for years, but there's nothing I find more frustrating than interviewing prospective jurors. You're absolutely right, Harcourt. People never seem to run out of excuses. Oh, excuse me. Judge Strickland speaking. Judge Strickland, this is Mr. Harry Hugh Morton, Jr. Yes? 
This morning you are interviewing my wife for jury duty. May I state that she would make an excellent juror? She has excellent judgment, perspicacity, and is completely unbiased in every respect. You must be sure to select her. <laughs> I'll consider it. Goodbye. Well, now that's interesting. Here's a man who insists upon our accepting his wife for jury duty. I don't like the sound of that. He must have some ulterior motive. I think it would be better to disqualify her. I think you're absolutely right, Harcourt. <laughs> Mrs. Blanche Martin disqualified. Hi, Gracie. Oh, hello, Harry. George in? Yes, he's up in the den. Come on in. Thank you. But, Harry, before you go up to see him, uh, will you stay and talk to me for a little while? Well, of course. I'd be glad to. Oh, thanks. What's on your mind? Well, uh, Blanche has been called for jury duty, so after today, I'm going to be very miserable, and I want to get used to it. <laughs> Couldn't Blanche get out of it? Well, no. She didn't do her civic duty of having a baby, so she felt she had to do this. <laughs> oh. Well, while Blanche is away, I'll try to do everything I can so you won't get too low. Oh, thank you, Harry. Will you be free tomorrow morning? Anytime you say. Oh, good. Then meet me here at 10 o'clock and we'll go to the beauty shop. <laughs> well, yes, Blanche and I have appointments to get our hair done, and you can take her place. Well, Gracie, I don't want to go to the beauty shop and get my hair done. Why not? Well, they'd laugh at me. Well, the minute you walk into a place like that, they laugh at you. So as long as they're laughing, you might as well have your hair done, and then you can sit under the dryer, and you won't be able to hear them. Wait a minute. I've got a better idea. Gracie, why don't you go down and volunteer to serve on the same jury panel with Blanche? Well, can I do that? Well, of course. They're very anxious to have people serve. Of course, the, the fee is only $5 a day. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> With you, Gracie, you have to promise me one thing, though. George may not want you to do this, so don't tell him I gave you the idea. In fact, don't tell anybody. It'll be our secret. <laughs> I better go up but, and change. Uh, Gracie, excuse me. Look, if you get on jury duty, remember, not a word to anybody about where you got the idea. Oh, I won't tell a soul. <laughs> oh, hi, Mother. Hello, Mr. Barnsell. Oh, hi, Ronnie. Ronnie. Was your breakfast glad to see you? Yes, Mother. Oh, well, I'd better go up and change. Where are you going? Oh, to apply for jury duty. It was my very own idea. <laughs> does, uh, does Dad know about this? No, he doesn't even know who I got my very own idea from. You advised her to do that? It was either that or wind up with a permanent. <laughs> I've got my own problem. Verna Mason's on her way over here right now, to, to, and she insists that I get her a job on the show. Well, why don't you? Are you kidding? Look, if Bonnie Sue McAfee finds out that I got another girl a job on the show and not her, she's going to kill me. Well, then your problem is to hold on to both girls without getting killed. <laughs> Mr. Farnsell, I learned that the road to love is very bumpy, and when you're riding along, you better carry a spare. <laughs> that is a beautiful philosophy. I just wish I was young enough to share it with you. When Verna Mason gets here, I've got to ask Dad to give her a job, and I've got to make sure that he doesn't. Well, Ronnie, it's very simple. You know your father. He likes to make up his own mind. Now, all you have to do is take Verna up there and oversell her to him. Insist that he give her a job, and he's sure to turn her down. Yeah, and I'll still look good to Verna because she'll think I tried. Well, of course, you... you... Wait, wait, excuse me. Oh, you better stay here because I might need you. Yeah. Ronnie, Ro whatever you do, don't let your father know that I gave you this idea. That, that Von Zell is a busy little man. He's got his finger in every pie. I think he'll have his face in it, too. Oh, hi, Verna. Hi. Oh, hello, Miss Burns. Nice to see you again. Oh, hello, Verna. Ronnie, did you tell your father I'm ready to step into show business? Yes. Yeah. Oh, well, goodbye, Verna, and goodbye, Ronnie. Oh, goodbye, I'm Mother. going to see Judge Strickland. <laughs> oh, Miss Burns, do you think I could be a great actress? Well, can you read lines? I can read them, but I can't remember them. Well, do you sing or dance? Oh, no. Well, can you laugh or cry? No. <laughs> then you'll have to be a great actress so people won't notice you can't do anything. <laughs> Come on, honey, I haven't got much time. I've got to be back in an hour for the lunch rush. 
Yes. George and Gracie will be right back and do one of their vaudeville routines. <laughs> <laughs> In my opinion, this is the greatest talent you've ever seen. And, and you've got to hire her. I insist. She's hired. What? She's hired. Well, I said I insist. I said she's hired. <laughs> Look, Dad, you don't have to be so stubborn. Just because I ask you for a little favor, you don't have to turn me down. Myrna, you can come over and do the line, and Ronnie got you the job. Oh, thank you, Mr. Burns. Ronnie, you were just wonderful. <laughs> Bonnie Sue's sure to kill me now. You mean I'm disqualified? That's right. Well, I, I don't mind being turned down as a juror, but would you gentlemen tell me why? Well, frankly, Mrs. Martin, it was because of your husband's telephone call. Really? Well, good day, gentlemen. Good day. <laughs> you know, I, I knew Harry would miss me, but I didn't think he cared that much. Imagine actually calling you to get me off jury duty so I'll be home with him. But, Mrs. Martin... I'm going home and fix that dear man the biggest lunch he's ever had. <laughs> he deserves it. Harcourt, do you think we made a boo-boo? It is entirely possible. What a morning this has been. Fifteen interviews, and only five jurors selected. And the ridiculous answers they give to our questions. I think they all do it deliberately to evade jury duty. Well, there'll be no more of that. Who's next on the list? Uh, Mrs. Burns. Uh. <laughs> Would you send Mrs. Burns in, please? Now, from now on, nobody gets off. No matter what weird answers they give to our questions. Good, good. Uh, Your Honor, there's a loose thread hanging from the bottom of your robe. Where? Right there. I'll get it all. Oh, thank you. Oh, I'm sorry to interrupt you while your dressmaker is giving you a fitting. Uh, Mr. Harcourt is not a dressmaker. Oh, I can see that. You know, the hemlines are much shorter this season. Mrs. Burns, I happen to be the jury commissioner. Oh. Would you be seated, Mrs. Burns? Well, thank you. Uh, first of all, Mrs. Burns, I'd like to begin by asking you if you're ready and willing to serve on a jury. Oh, of course. Mr. Von Zell said my fee would be uh, $5 a day. That is correct. Oh, good. Now, here's $25. I'll take five days. <laughs> what? Of course, if my friend can afford to stay longer, so will I. You were having fun with us? Well, not yet. Mrs. Burns, we pay our jurors $5 a day. Oh, well, then you can count on us for months. Would you object if I asked you some questions? No, go ahead. First of all, do you object to capital punishment? I certainly would. I haven't done anything to deserve it. I mean for others. If they've done something, let them object. Five dollars a day, those are pretty easy questions. Mrs. Burns, are you deliberately trying to evade uh, performing your civic duty? Well, of course not. I performed it years ago. Ronnie is 21 now. <laughs> and, and when I had him, I didn't even know it was my civic duty. Uh, Judge uh, Strickland, do you? Mrs. Burns, have you ever been convicted of any crime? Well, last week I got a ticket for blocking traffic. Oh, that doesn't count. Good, then I won't pay it. Mrs. Burns. It really wasn't my fault. I was driving, and I was in the middle of the intersection when the sign under the traffic light lit up and said, Walk. So when I got out of my car and walked, they gave me a ticket. That was a fine performance, Mrs. Burns, but you haven't fooled us at all. Knowing that a very intelligent and clever woman could put on an act like that. Now, we've decided to accept you for jury duty. You report here tomorrow morning. Well, wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> Harcourt, you look worried. You suppose we pulled another boo-boo? There is a possibility. So, Gracie's gonna be on the jury next week, huh? I wouldn't miss that show if... if it were on another network. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, Gracie, who'll it be tonight? 
Oh, well, how about my cousin who traveled around the world and took pictures and gave lectures, Fitzpatrick Allen? Fitzpatrick Allen, the world traveler? Mm-hmm. My... Sounds like an exciting person, huh? Oh, yes. My cousin Fitz certainly learned plenty from his travels. Now, for instance, he uh, learned why the South Sea Islanders build houses of bamboo instead of fireproof stuff like bricks. Well, why did they do that? Well, it's more sensible. A bamboo house is much easier to rebuild after it burns down. Yes, well, I can see. You see, I, 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 I never traveled, so I would wouldn't know that. Uh, tell me, in, in, in these travels, did he uh, did he take any pictures? Oh, yes, but something always seemed to happen to spoil his pictures. Oh? Once he put on a diver's suit and went down 100 feet to take some film of undersea light. I see. Put on this diver's suit and went down there to take yes. some pictures. Huh? and if he hadn't dropped his camera, he'd have taken a picture that would have been the only one of its kind ever taken. A picture of what? Uh, an octopus that had ten arms. No, 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 Gracie. An octopus only has eight arms. Two of them were my cousins. That's why he dropped the camera. Well, the octopus probably wanted to make it a group picture. He even had bad luck when he tried to take a picture of the Leaning Tower of Pisa. You mean he didn't get it? Oh, he got it, but in the picture, the tower came out straight. But that's impossible. Well, he had a few glasses of wine, and when he took the picture, he was leaning, leaning as, as much, much as, as the tower was. <laughs> well, tell me, did he ever do anything exciting, like hunting tigers on elephants? Oh, no, no. He never could have stood that. He used to get too excited just hunting for fleas on his dog. <laughs> Where is he now? The last letter we got, he was finishing up his work inside of Mount Vesuvius. You mean inside the crater? In it? He was way at the bottom. He had to find a dark spot to develop all his pictures. Develop, yes. <laughs> Appearing on tonight's show were Valerie Allen as Verna Mason, Douglas Dumbrill as Judge Strickland, Harry Cheshire as Harcourt. 